Inside the Rules, episode 5, part 2, got my crazy off season here with my boy Psalms. Hey, it's good to be here. It's good to be, it's good, it's good. Alright, let's get straight into it now. So, for the last couple of weeks, we've seen trades, we've seen signings, we've seen all types of craziness going on inside the NBA. So let's discuss a few things. So, Psalms, any intake on any teams at all that are looking to contend, possibly just future team top t- top tier teams. Um, I think the East got a little bit better. Yeah, I think with KD and Kyrie yeah, moving and go, mm-hmm. going over to the Nets, but of course KD's not playing next year. Yeah, Boston did good to kept, uh, snap up Kemba Walker. Yeah, that was a good move. Philadelphia stayed the same. Pretty much. I think Milwaukee probably stayed the same, mm. although they added a couple extra players. They yeah. still lost Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah. So overall, the East got a little bit better, but I can't see a team from the East winning next season. And then over in the West, you had an interesting off season. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I'm yeah. out in the West, like. We saw what the Lakers, the Clippers did. Yeah. Rockets. Yeah. Utah and Denver are. Um, yeah, they're making signings. Yeah, they're, they're making teams, different sure. different signings. So it's good. So it's been wild all over. Yeah, man. I mean, um, obviously we're touching on the whole Clippers situation. That's just amplified their defense a lot better. So now, it's a it's a problem. Two guys who are above like six for seven. It's not. It's not two guys. It's five guys. But five. That's what I'm saying. They got yeah. five good Solid. defenders on yeah. that team. Like yeah. um, Montrezl's a mm. good defender in the post. You got Kawhi. You got Paul George, Patrick Beverly. Yeah, he's irritating. <laughs> and and their bench is solid too it's nothing to laugh at um, yeah. i think there was a stat that the lou williams um montrezl pick and roll mm. was like a point something ridiculous per, per, per possession so like if those two run a pick and roll they're guaranteed to near enough score a yeah. bucket yeah and that's coming off your bench that's mad that's actually mad <laughs> boy that sounds like a bit like spurs basketball but boy, yeah. it's mad it's mad um Obviously now we've heard, you know, yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George off to the Clippers. Um, Gravity Davis, obviously he was one of the starting trades, went to the Lakers. Um, I think the one that shocked everyone was obviously Russell Westbrook and CP3. Now, me, I, me personally, I, I don't know, I want to see it work out. But then at the same time, I'm just thinking, okay, like two ball dominant guys. Same team. Uh, I had a good chemistry before, but at the same time, I just don't know. I really don't know. So it's a weird one. It's weird. Yeah, and obviously when they had that chemistry, there were there were two different points in their careers. You know. Yeah, yeah. James Harden was coming off the bench. He was the mm. sixth man, mm. and Russell Westbrook was the starting point guard. And James was usually the third option and James was the facilitator really when he came came mm. in into that unit he used to handle the ball yeah set everybody else up um, now it's a situation where James has the ball so much of the time in his hands his yeah. his usage is ridiculous and then Russell's usage is ri- is going to be ridiculous as always cuz he's not looking to pass that ball yeah. unless he has to yeah or to get those assists um so that dynamic is definitely a weird one they might try and stagger their minutes the same way they did cp3 yeah. and, and and hardens but yeah again what do you do when you've got 30, 30 seconds left in the game yeah. you might potentially get two possessions one of them is going to want to take both the shots mm, eventually so i don't know where what, what you do in that situation and um what Daryl Morey did was was interesting. I mean, mm. after the Carmelo interview, yeah. I mean, apparently he didn't have a conversation with Carmelo after ten games. He just told him yeah. he was done. Um, shipped CP3 off to Oklahoma. Now, yeah. 
in today's NBA, when stars demand a trade, yeah. they give a list of teams. Mm. I don't think OKC was ever going to be on CP. Obviously, yeah, nah, CP definitely, definitely not, definitely not. And um, that's why this offseason was so interesting, actually, yeah. because you didn't know who was making these decisions. You didn't mm. know if it was coming from the general manager or the players' camp. Yeah. It was like every night you go to sleep, because obviously we're in London, and you wake up in the morning and you hear someone, someone new went somewhere else. Yeah. And you're just like, wait, you didn't see this coming. So it was definitely interesting for sure. Yeah, I think um, I think with that one as well, it's like um, I don't know if there was chemistry issues between the two or like James Harden and CP3. So obviously that was partly one of the reasons why everybody said, "Oh yeah, that's why he's gone." But then again, it, it just looks one of it's one of those things. I think um, I think it's getting close to that point where CP3 could either buy out his situation or he might just end up staying until or he'll probably just have to wait till All Star Weekend, most likely. So. Yeah, that one's, it's a weird one, but it, it's interesting to see what can happen in it. I mean, especially with the West now anyway, so let's just see what yeah. happens. Um, yeah. I mean, there's teams out there for him, I think. You know, CP3's never really, never really played well with another dominant guard or another dominant wing player. Yeah. I think you look at the teams he's been on, you know, it's been him and Biggs, mm. so... Which team does he go to? I think the Timberwolves is an interesting choice. I mean... Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. He'd definitely be an upgrade at their point guard position. Yeah, You've yeah. got a young big man in Carl yeah. Anthony Towns, who yeah. not too long ago we were talking about, you know, is he possibly the best big man in the league? Mm. Um, he's had a down year, partly because of friction with Jimmy Butler and everything, everything else, else yeah. going on. Yeah. So, I don't know. The Timberwolves could be in an interesting situation, but the CP3 yeah. want to go where it's cold. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> I don't know. I think that would be good for him as well because they need that floor general type of guy. So, maybe that could work out for them for, that, for their sake. But, yeah, it's just like... Obviously, I think CP3 is at the stage of his career now where he wants to win. And obviously... But that trade just pushed him back a lot more. So, that's just going to... For the next two, three years, that's it's not probably it's not going to seem possible. So, yeah. Um, despite everything, what do you think of like the Warriors? Like, do you feel like I, I feel like with the Warriors, I feel like uh, despite losing um KD and Andre Andre Godala, I, I kind of feel like they've kind of gone back to that same trio that they've had with Clay, Curry, and Draymond Green. I feel I feel like it's just kind of gone back down to how it was before, really. Like, before anything major happened. Yeah. Um, Willie Cauley-Stein was a good pickup. Yeah. He's, he's a good defensive big man. Um, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, that that's... I think it, they've done that, obviously, just because Clay's out for the for most of the season. But it, it's still a bit weird, like, to have another, like... I mean, I guess it's the team is a shooting team, but I, I'm guessing, like, but... But what happens when Clay comes but back? When Clay comes back, he, yeah, that's what I'm does saying. Does he go to the bench? Do you... Do you then trade him after put, half a season? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't that. know. That's what I'm saying. Because like, they will say that one play, like, they'll probably put Clay at the three, but I'm thinking, yeah, but he's not. Well, some of the guys that are on that are at the three are quite tough, and Clay isn't that. I mean, Clay's yeah. a very good defender. Yeah. But he's but he's a 6 7 shooting guard. Yeah. That's an advantage. You put him at the three, suddenly, physically, he doesn't have an advantage. Yeah. And, you know, coming back from. The injury that he had, you know, do you want him trying to hold his ground in the post yeah. against a Giannis, a LeBron? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's you not, know, it's those guys there, they've got big physical frames. That's not visible at all. Plus, um, plus, I don't know. Yeah, Willie Cody Sam was actually a good pickup. That was a really good pickup. Because um, he's been at the Kings most of the time. I know he's had some trouble when he got drafted. He, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, he's not a good centre, oh, he doesn't do much, but, like, with the team that he's on, like, well, you can't really, pro you can't really, some people, when they're on bad teams, they can't really progress, and that's just the way it is, sometimes, anyway, but, yeah, I think, um, for the team, for where he's gonna go, and hopefully the world can develop him into another big man, he doesn't have to do much, I would say, personally, just make him into something like a, 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 be a bit better than Jerome McGee, at least, then, that's it, that's him moulded, really. Yeah, but I think out in the West, you know, Denver and Utah yeah. are sleepers. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Utah picked up Mike Conley. Mike Conley. And he's been underrated for so long. So long, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think he's got any all-star appearances. I think that's criminal. I think he's only got like... I don't think he's got any. I don't think he's got one. Maybe one, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't think he's good. Yeah, he's not like a major guy that's known like that. But, yeah. He's really good. It's weird as well. That's the thing. Because the team that he was on, it's like, well... When you're on bad team, when you, no, I wouldn't say the Grizzlies at the time were a bad team. Obviously, now they've hit that slump. But before, they was that mediocre team that always stayed fourth and fifth, couldn't really push to the top. But now, it's like now that they're in that process of rebuilding, and obviously Matt Conley can get away from that. But when you trade for someone who need and that and Utah's a team that needs a veteran point guard, like to help Donovan Mitchell really go bare, just on the, to cover their positions. Now that you have him. It kind of just that builds that structure. Well, yeah, cool. He's that guy who can facilitate, get everyone the ball where they need to, knowing that he can get his own points as well. Plus, he plays good defense. So, yeah, like, he's been on the for a while, for a long while. I think it's because he's been in the West. Yeah. I mean, you put him in the East. He's, I think he's an all-star, all-star guy. every season. All-star every guy, season. yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's just too many good guards in the West. And then you look at Denver. They didn't get anyone major in the off season. Yeah. But they got they drafted Bobo. Mm. He fell. Um, probably injury concerns. But then Michael Porter Jr. comes back. Yeah. Now, if those two pan out, suddenly you've got guys who were top five talents in their drafts. Yeah. So you basically got two top five draft picks. Mm. Onto a team that was already very deep. Um, who knows? This might be the year Jamal Murray really breaks out because yeah. you know you get to the end of the game, last two minutes, mm. everybody's looking at Nikola Jokic. So who t- who, who steps up? So I yeah. think Jamal Murray might have a big year, and if those two come in, then this could be this year's Toronto. Yeah, true, true. I definitely think. Yeah, because Denver, man, where they even though even though I knew they would get have trouble in the second round, but I knew like no matter what, where they finish in the playoffs anyway, I said, you know what? Like they've had a good run. Now it's about finding a key guy or trying to get that key player. But the problem is it's Denver. No one really wants to sign with a team. We can hear Denver. You don't really want to hear anything like that. That's the thing. Mm. You don't really want to hear that. So it's just kind of mad to hear that sort of thing. So yeah. But um I don't know, like to hear to hear like Denver being the top rankers, it's it's been a long, long while. A very long while. Hey, last time they were relevant, Melo was averaging twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. that was a long time ago. That was yeah. like two thousand and eight, so it's been like what, ten ten years? Yeah, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Let's talk about the bad teams though. I mean, Phoenix. Yeah, uh, okay, with Phoenix, I don't know, like, they have, okay, they have a good young core, they have, obviously, um, uh, DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, but the problem is, is just, what are you, what are you supposed to do with them, whereas, whereas the whole core team itself is not progressing, Mm. you know? I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't see that. I just don't see like the Suns being for another couple of years in the in the playoff run at all. I mean, it's a shame because Devin Booker's Devin Booker's nice. Yeah, that's the thing. I, but I feel like with with a lot of um, these bad teams now, is that what they're doing? They will offer out the max contract to these guys who are who are good, who are talented, but then it has there's no room for improvement. So that leaves the cap. Your cap is done. Like you can't really adjust your lineup because. You know, certain certain players or certain teams don't want to come there, and then it's just like, well, you're left with these young guys who are trying their best to like change the team how it is. But like, what else can you what else can you bring to them? Because when when it comes to their like when it comes to their contract when it comes to their contract they're running out, it's like, what can you say to them? Like, what? Please stay. We'll offer you this. We'll offer you that. It's it's not sometimes it's not even about the money number. It's about how you play and what you can do as mm-hmm. a team. And they've had too many coaches at this point. I think yeah. they've had like a new coach every year. Every year or something. Every year or something yeah, like so they that, need so. to change that. Um, 
they need to get rid of probably all those guys that didn't pan out. I mean, they've had like loads of top top five picks now. They yeah. had what's his name? Drug and Bender. Um oh, I forgot about Marquise it. Marquise Chris is gone. Yeah. Josh Jackson, mm. he's he's still there. He didn't really pan out. Mm. TJ Warren, again, he scores but nothing else. Yeah. Um and it's been pick after pick after pick and yeah. Even their point guard situation, it's been like a new point guard every year as well. I mean, they got Tyler Ulis a few years back. Yeah. I don't even think he, he he's, he's, he's on their team anymore. So mm. that's one team that doesn't seem to be getting any better. Yeah. Does, does Devin Booker force his way out and go somewhere, say Boston? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Um, the Pelicans. They're not a bad team no more. Nah, they're not a bad team. No, nah, I think I think I think what they've done for themselves after after like after trading Anthony Davis, I think what they've done for themselves now is probably better. And it, it, it builds like you don't really have to focus on one player now, which I think before they was. Now they can focus on Lonzo Bull, Josh Hart, they can focus on Zion. You know, there's all these guys who are pretty much top top guys or whatever now and now you can actually see what they can do when it comes to the floor like um Derek Favors was a good pick up too yeah yeah a lot of people said like oh why are the Pelicans picking him up but I was like but it's to build length it's to build like substance within that team yeah you people don't realise this that's the thing like you might that it's weird like you you might think oh Derek Favors is, is, is a guy who's, who's done he hasn't done much but to a team like the Pelicans as a like as a guy who's coming onto a vet, someone who's still early in his prime. I think I think he's had a quietly productive career. I mean he yeah, came in yeah. as a top five pick. Yeah. Um it didn't really pan out straight away because mm. he came in with all the athletic ability. Yeah. But with sort of an old school game. Yeah. He's he's not he's not someone who's gonna go out to the perimeter. Yeah. So he's there in the paint. He then goes to Utah small market team mm. um, and then he's playing alongside another big man who doesn't really shoot the ball well yeah. I mean Rudy Gobert gets the blocks so he gets all, all, all the hype um, and now he's in a situation where he'll be playing the five Yeah. so him and Zion it could work mm. it could work um, and they showed up in the summer league like they've got some packages I think there was one out of bounds play against the Knicks yeah, and they just lobbed it to him. Mm. Like you don't see that with too many teams just yeah. drawing up plays like that. So they look like they've got plans to put Zion in situations to um, maximize his gifts. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because everything works out. I don't see Zion leaving anytime soon, or at least being traded or whatever. But yeah, like it's definitely like the Pelicans are just like one of those teams. They've won. They're the team that in the draft that. They've just won, but they've also won everything else. With they've won through the, the the whole structure of everything, like through the trades, through free agency, through the whole draft and everything like that. Yeah. Where some teams will get the draft guy, but then they won't like. That's it. Then that's it. You won't hear much about them, and then they'll have a bad season. It's like, oh, we had this guy from the draft, but that's only it. No, I agree. I agree. Um, Zion's in a great situation. Um, He's a high energy player. Mm. If he's your power forward playing defense, and then you've got Lonzo, um, Drew Holiday, and Brandon <coughs> Ingram all tuned in playing defense as well. Yeah. Um, you've got a strong four guys who are going to play defense. So, um, no, they've got a chance to compete and they're going to run up and down the floor. So, they've got a team to do that. Um, the Knicks. Ah, the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's your team as well. Nah, nah, obviously, I said it quietly. It, it, it's I said Pete. It quietly. It's mad because the thing is, I think uh, you know what the Knicks have. Uh, they've lost out, man. They they really lost out. They they did everything this summer that they said. Oh yeah, we're gonna get KD. We're gonna get Kyrie. You know, they was gonna keep Porzingis, which then that didn't end up happening. All this other stuff that the promises that came, none of them happened. The only good thing they got was RJ Barrett. Now. I was in KD's DMs actually. <laughs> I, I asked him to come to New York. Um, but little did I know that the Knicks being the Knicks didn't even set up a meeting. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. that, that was crazy to me. But to be fair, after Amari Stoudemire, yeah. you know, it makes sense. But at the same time, it's a loss. It's but a big it's loss. It's a big loss, man. I mean, we didn't get anybody. Um, but now we're left with a roster full of young guys. Yeah. And I don't even know what we're doing with some of these young guys. I don't know if they're going to start. Mm. Um, we've got an interesting situation where we've got three point guards. Yeah. Dennis Smith Jr., Alfred Payton, and Frank Nilakino, who oh, yeah. we took ahead Good of job. Dennis Smith, yeah. Dennis Smith yeah. Jr. Mm. He doesn't look like he's going to be in the future, in the, in the future plans. But he's a 6-7 point guard who can defend. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd personally find a job for him. Yeah. Um, maybe not at the point. You go to the two. We got Damian Dotson and RJ Barrett. Which one of them starts? I don't know. Yeah. Um, RJ didn't have the greatest of summer leagues, mm. although he came came in, came up strong towards yeah. the end. Um, Kevin Knox had a better summer league last year than he did this year. Yeah. It's, it's it's a head scratcher and then you sign loads of big men and you're supposed to be developing Mitchell Robinson I don't get yeah it. I don't understand but, that yeah yeah I don't really don't understand that but that's you've got really Julius Randle <clears throat> yeah that's, that, that's, that's a good pickup yeah that's a good that's a good thing yeah that's that's a good pickup but yeah but I don't know the Knicks are just <laughs> it is bad man the expectations for that team is just are so unbelievable sometimes man but I don't know man I don't know I don't know with the way the East is some things, you know, they, 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 some things are bound to happen. But yeah, like it, it's just I don't know, man. I really don't know because now, now that Brooklyn is that the top talk of the town now because they got Kyrie, because they got KD. But even before that, when they had, it's weird to say D'Angelo Russell, they got Carlos Levert. You know, they got they got good guys, good core guys that are ready to um, just take that team forward, push it. Just keep, just basically keep that team, basically keep Brooklyn at the tops of New York for a while. So, yeah, the Knicks have, I think the Knicks have, they've kind of, ever since that whole Porzingis nonsense, they've kind of just gone backwards. Ever since the mellow nonsense. Oh, even Knicks, that, yeah. The Knicks have been pushing my hairline back for <laughs> years. Um, and, do you know what, I have that conversation with my barber every time I see him. I just say, <laughs> between Arsenal and the Knicks, it's a hard life sometimes. Yeah, yeah. no, no, um, it's true. Atlanta, though. Atlanta, yeah, I think Atlanta, Atlanta, they're making some, I think they're making some strides. Like, small, but it's, they're making some strides. Um, I definitely see Trey Young um, being what they need for now, especially now for what they need. Um, apparently, he put on some weight. I can't remember exactly how much he wants, like 200. Just something like 17 pounds or yeah, something. Yeah, some, like, something like, like that. To take so, him up and he's going to go train with... I can't remember. Was it Kobe or something? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I I didn't quite get it either. Yeah. Um, but I think I think they're quietly building one of the best young cores in the league. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Cam Reddish is my is my is my favorite player in this draft. Mm. I think he's got sleeper potential. Yeah. As long as he stays away from the pizza. Um, <laughs> pizza, yeah, yeah, well, apparently, that. apparently, his diet and everything were terrible at Duke. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the sky's the limit for them. True. Um. Another team. I think this team. I think. Uh. I wanted them to see that. I wanted them to make the playoffs this year, but they didn't have. They they were close, but they didn't have that chance. And I thought. Um. The Sacramento Kings. I thought. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They had a chance, but. I want to see what happens going for the next couple of years because I still think Young Fox is a potential. I still think in the next couple of years he can be something special. I still think Buddy Hill. I think Buddy Hill's improved like without people even realizing that he's improved like a lot. You know, um, having someone like Harrison Barnes as a vet helps the team a bit more. But yeah, that's just. But yeah, as a team itself, I think yeah they just got a couple more strides to make. Who's the walking bucket on that team, though? But the walking one. Like, who's a walking bucket on that team? Like, who are you going to give the ball to and say, you get a bucket for us every single possession? Um, I'd probably go with... Um, 
I think I think yeah, but I'll probably go with Darren Fox. But then he's already got the ball. But yeah, he's always got the ball. Who does he pass to? I I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it is a weird one. I mean, like, Buddy's improved, but it's just... Yeah, it's it's a weird one. Buddy Buddy has improved. I feel feel like they're a player away from from being something. I don't know. Could Marvin Bagley be that guy? Maybe. He's getting better, but I think he's more Chris Bosh than, you know... A, a thoroughbred superstar like um, yeah like a like an ad or something like that mm. I, I can't see him in that that vet ilk vein but um i don't know who, who's who's the guy on that team yeah but that's the thing a lot yeah that's that's the thing if you young teams have that yeah they don't have that guy that main scorer or somebody just does something to shift the whole defense or offense so i don't think philadelphia who got any better because they mm. lost Jimmy Butler. Yeah. That was your guy at the end of the game who's going to go there, create something, get a bucket. Yeah. Now, you've got Ben Simmons dancing on the perimeter. I yeah. mean, I've seen him shoot a few jumpers in the summer, but yeah, it, looks like, it looks like he's going up with his right hand to shoot the ball and then he switches it to his left hand to then shoot it. Now, yeah. It's the same problem Lonzo had last year. Mm. I mean, that shot is coming across the side of his body, and it's and is then and yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people like, oh, that's the thing with Ben Simmons as well. It's like because a lot of people always like complain about, oh, he's not a shooter though. He can't do much on the perimeter. It's like, yeah, because that whole elbow is sticking out. It's harder to control than you think. It's a lot harder to tuck in. It's a lot, especially for a big guy who's like 6'10, and got all that weight on him. And his elbow's not even sticking out, he's literally switching hands. Mm. He's switching hands. Like, yeah. just shoot the ball. It's weird, man. It's a weird one, though. Um, wait, hold on. Lakers, I definitely want to touch on the Lakers because I have to I have to touch on my team here. I have to touch on them. Like, okay, all right. So, despite, I don't think I'm upset with, um, who we got but it's annoying who we traded to get yeah so i know we got Anthony davis i know we got the marcus cousins now i know we got danny green but i don't think i think three good additions i'm not going to complain about that call cool. yeah fine that's good additions obviously our new coach frank vogel love franco love him because he's just he when um the indiana, indiana pacers were pretty much at their prime of the east in their playoffs when they were against the heat and stuff those series, that series was worth to watch, and defensively, that that team was there. So yeah, but um, I just I'm hoping this year is not a it's not one of those things where LeBron just sleeps like throughout half the season and then says playoff mode activated, and then we still don't make the playoffs. I don't want that. Don't want that at all. Leave LeBron out of it. <laughs> Leave LeBron out, LeBron out of it. I mean, expectation is a dangerous thing. Yeah. Um, LeBron comes to the Lakers and everybody suddenly thinks, <coughs> you know, they're a championship. Yeah, playoff team, team, all this and that. Right, look, yeah. What he did in Cleveland mm. was nothing short of a miracle in his last season. Yeah. Carrying those scrubs all the way to um, the finals <laughs> just to get smoked. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that young team there just was not ready. And the guys they had on that team, I look, the pieces I didn't think fit together very well. You know, sometimes the ball was in Rondo's hands. Sometimes it's in Lonzo's hands. Yeah. Brandon Ingram wants it. Josh Hart said it himself on the Gilbert Arenas podcast. You know, he spent all summer working on ball screens and, mm. you know, being more of a point guard to then come into the season. And he doesn't get it to use that. He wanted to show mm. some stuff. Yeah. And then LeBron's obviously going to handle it at times. So sharing the ball between everyone, I don't think anyone really got into their rhythm. They yeah. won some games. Yeah. But then when you start losing, your mindset starts to change. You yeah. know, you start to think about things a bit more selfishly. Like, I need to do this. I need to do that. Mm. Um, and some guys got injured and it just never, it just never um, worked out. So yeah. I think it was a tough season. But of those guys... I think you'll only miss maybe Lonzo. Mm. 
I think I would I probably wouldn't miss Josh Hart. You got Danny Green and Avery Bradley, Brandon Ingram. I mean, the hype is he's just like KD. Yeah, yeah. But KD came into the NBA averaging 18 points at 18, 19. Yeah. Brandon Ingram's yeah, two, three yeah. years in now. Nice. I don't see it. No. He might be a really solid player. Yeah. Um, I just don't see it. And then you keep Kuzma. He is what he is. Yeah, I need um, more Kuzma to go. I don't least. know if he's going to start or come off the bench. Mm. Um, they'll have to figure that out. But the Lakers are the Lakers. Um, it's AD, LeBron, and everybody else has a job to do. Yeah. And that's where I'll, put, I'll leave it. Yeah, of course. Definitely. I think mean, now that... Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, this is the team that we want. Well, this is the team that we want now, so... All right, fine. Let's just make you regard. I think this. I hope this shit just changes. I don't. I don't mind where we come as long as we at least make a good playoff run. At least that's all I want. That's all I want now. Obviously, um. So yeah, Portland. Okay, so Portland were interesting. Now, I knew obviously when they got to the conference finals, it was gonna happen. A sweep was gonna happen. I didn't. I, I didn't feel like they were capable of at least winning one game. But I knew they could push the distance. Um, obviously, now they've got um, Hassan Whiteside, which I think is uh, it's not too bad. It's a great pickup. You know, it's good pickup. Pick you know, especially for that team, especially using um, Nurkic to that injury, like that break, that leg breaking injury. My goodness, that was bad. But um, yeah, like I think that team there now, it's they could push for it. They can push for like a they, I'd say they could push for at least they were they're in that top tier kind of ranking. But the problem is now now that the West has changed vigorously, you know it's just they well. could make it to the conference finals. Mm. I think they can make it to the conference finals. Yeah. I mean, you look at the other teams. Um, if they manage to avoid the Clippers, yeah, they've got a chance against every other team because mm. Dame and CJ. It's like they could both get 40 yeah. together. Like those two could legit combine for 80 points and you just need everybody else to chip in for 10 points. Now, mm. Hassan Whiteside has been screaming, give me the ball and give me minutes for the longest. He's going to get that opportunity now in Portland. Um, they've been crying out for someone down low to give the ball to. Yeah, yeah. And they've been looking for someone to dive to the basket on pick and rolls so he's he's got an opportunity to push them over the top to an extent um but the only team i can't see them beating is the clippers yeah um they've got a chance against the lakers because the lakers don't have a, a point guard that's going to yeah, give no, buckets no, right no. back to dame um I think that's the only thing the Lakers are missing at this point, a point guard. Point guard, yeah. That's the only thing. I think, uh, I don't know, it just has to be someone who's average. Not, no, not average, but someone who just does the job. That's all I, I care about, to be honest. I don't really care about... Uh, he's got at least above average, at least 10 to 15 points, at least. But You think Rondo yeah. can still do that? Nah, I don't think he can. Because Rondo's been in the league for too long now, but he hasn't worked on his jump shot. And he's just kind of like, he's kind of carrying himself on defense, which is all good. But then, what about offense? Like, we, what if you're open on the three? What if you need a mid range shot? What if you need, like, he can attack the basket. I'm not saying you can't do that. But what if you have an open jump shot? That's where I come from. Like, yeah, like, you can, you can, you can attack, you can defend. But yeah, I feel like he's just, he's left his jump shot for so long that he, it's just not, nah, it's not going to carry that. It's not going to help him carry, help, carry, carry the team in general. Nah, but I definitely think like yeah, Poland. Yeah, I think yeah they're capable. They're capable. Oh, and they got Ken Basemore as well. Okay, yeah they're capable. Very capable. I think a team that needs to. Um, what did you know? I think the Spurs should kind of rebuild. I think. I think they. Well, well that's just me saying that, but I think they need to. They're weird. 
it's just yeah. I, I, as long as I've known them, they've just been a team full of old guys. Yeah, yeah. Like they'll pick up a vet, another vet, another vet. That's what I'm saying. But you don't see them just stack loading up on young guys and tanking. Like they just don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm uh, saying. I guess that's their way of doing things. Um, but then, can they afford to really tank like that? I mean, San Antonio, small market team. I suppose they need to fill the seats somehow. Yeah. Um, it's not like Madison Square Garden, mm. where you know people are coming even if you're losing seven games. Yeah. I think with the Spurs as well, it's just, um, yeah, I think the only kind of addition they have is the Martha Rosen, but even that, uh, but I don't think. But that was lo- that was last season. Last season, isn't it? That but yeah, that's the only season. thing. But that's the only thing that's keeping them kind of there in the talks or anything. But even with that, I think I think the Mars had like a. I wouldn't say he's had a bad season, but I just don't think. Yeah, it's not done anything spectacular. It's not like anything where like oh he's done this he's done that. It's just kind of it's been it's been a, a mixture of things. But it's then again it's just not been heard about or spoken of. If that matters. small market team. Yeah, I mean if you look at his numbers, his numbers are good. Mm. They're all star level. He's just not in the conversation of you know being one of the best players in the NBA, and I don't think he is one of the best players in the NBA. Mm. I don't see him in that top fifteen. He's a star. I think he, him, Bradley Beal, um, Chris Middleton, he's sort of in that category. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bradley. Speaking of Bradley Beal now, obviously the Wizards, I think um, they've, lost, well, yeah, they've lost John Wall for like another year now because of his um, surgery, I think. It's a surgery, something like that, but yeah. Yeah, I think he fell down the stairs again. Yeah, that was it, something like that. And yeah, like I don't, I don't know. I feel, I feel like with the Wizards now, because I remember when the Wizards they were like fighting for fourth place, and they were like second of that um, of their division, and, and now it's now now they're a team that's like just there, all the way at the, like near at the bottom, just there. And I'm just like, wait, what happened to this team? Like they had John Wall, Bradley bro, like they had a, a good couple players, backup players. Now. Nothing. They're the Dame and CJ of the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Two players, trash roster. Mm. But the difference is they've also got... Um, I think Scott Brooks is a terrible coach. Mm. Um, couldn't really coach well. I don't think he coached well in OKC. He had tremendous talent. Mm. Didn't do a good job there. Um, terrible GM. Yeah. I mean, some of the guys that they've drafted and and they haven't really hit on any of them. No. You know, you look at Otto Porter Jr. Yeah. Kelly 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 Oubre. Oubre. I think he's one of the subs. And they ship them out and you look at some of the contracts they handed out. I mean, at one point they were spending 18 million on marching Gortat. Jan Mahimi, the backup, was getting paid like 5 mil. Yeah. And those are big men who just catch the ball and go up yeah like you don't need to pay a man that 18 much. million for that you can find that for 6 million somewhere so yeah yeah I think stuff like that I don't know it's weird man I think um, I don't know like they added obviously they added as Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas has got like a one year deal I don't know what's that going to do for the, the, the team in general but even if the team are bad then let's say he has like a good season in terms of his own stats then I guess that just kind of like boosts his game a little, whatever. But yeah, I don't know what the Wizards try. I think they obviously they need someone to fill John Wall. I think that might be the shortest backcourt in the league. Yeah, Isaiah so Thomas and Bradley Bill. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, a tiny backcourt. Yeah, it's like it's not that bad, but it's just yeah, is, is it capable enough? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? To be fair, I like Troy Brown. Troy Brown. I, I like Troy Brown. Um, he can do a little bit of everything. Mm. I think they experimented with him playing at the point towards the end of last season, handling the ball. Yeah. Um, his game, he's definitely got that in his game. But again, he's got 
Rondo problems with his offense. I mean, he's a much better shooter than Rondo. Yeah. But it's just not consistent with it. And even that, you know, you spent a first round pick on him last year. Yeah. What do you do? Are you gonna are you gonna actually start him this year, or are you gonna have him come off the bench? Yeah. Makes no sense to me sometimes. That's true. That's true. Um, I don't know. It's weird. You know, the thing is, it's just when I look at some of these teams now, I'm thinking, okay, now who's like an addition that's just not people won't think is great. I think I think the Pistons. The Detroit, I think the Detroit Pistons. I think. Um, what they've done in the last two years, they've got like a duo back court now, so it's kind of interesting. Okay, cool. Blake Griffin, John, John, Andre Drummond. Okay, cool. Then they've added Derrick Rose, which I think is, it's not, it's not so bad. I mean, okay, like it's, a, it's interesting. It's interesting. I don't know if it's gonna like be one of those things where Rose comes off the bench. He probably won't. They probably might just start him because he has that experience, but. Yeah, like it's just it's interesting. Who's their point guard now? Um, Reggie Jackson. I'm starting D Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you saw what that man did last season. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Uh, true, Reggie true. Jackson. To be honest, they can start D Rose. I mean, they've really got the brick squad. Yeah. Um, because everybody in that starting lineup is chucking up bricks. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah. Nobody can shoot. Can Throw them. one more bad shooter in the mix. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Can't get much worse. True. But you know what? They've got enough experience to probably just about make the playoffs and yeah. make it out of the first round. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, they definitely. Yeah, really just he's been on that team for a long while, man. I don't know what. Like, I don't know what improvements they tried to make with him, but. Somebody in Boston should have told Terry Rozier, don't end up like Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Cause that's an, cause that's just another example of a guy who thought he was better than a backup. Yeah. And now he's in that position starting, mm. and he's got nothing to show for it. Yeah. But again, secure the bag. It's true. It's true. I think um, the Magic did okay this season. I don't think they did all right. Who did they get? Magic. Um, I don't think I don't think they got anybody. Crazy that I don't think they got anyone crazy like that. I know they got um no, nah, I'm not even too sure. That's the thing. I don't think I don't think that, I think that their trades were like that. That any anyone in particular really, but um I know they had um I know they've they've still got yeah they still got Aaron Gordon, still got um Mobamba. Uh, obviously you got Marco Fold, so obviously he's gonna make a comeback. I, I hope he does improve because this that is that is I don't know. I don't read really don't know what's gonna happen. I've, I've, I've heard enough. Next team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into the next team. <laughs> but now um there was I think hold on let me check a second. I don't know if they're on here exactly, but I think um bottom tier teams. Oh Dallas Mavericks. That's Mavericks. That uh, that's an interesting one because obviously they've still got. Um, I think the only yeah, obviously they made Chris Tapps came before the playoffs, and obviously they still got Luca. Well, they drafted Luca. I think the only additions they've made is who's that? Yeah, they've got um, yeah, Delon Wright, Seth Curry, yeah, little key additions. But yeah, like that team there, I think. <laughs> I think I think if they get the chemistry right, I think it's gonna be mad. Them two that are gonna be just something else, man. That's just gonna be. Mm, Can mm. I be like Skip Bayless and call him number six? Yeah, <laughs> man, Luca and Pozingis. That is gonna be. That's gonna be a crazy one. That guy left my team, so again, he left my team. He was injured last season. Yeah, I guess he could probably come back. Average, maybe 18, 20 points. Mm. Seven foot three and has never averaged ten rebounds. Um, yeah, that's Dallas's problem. Um, but Luca, <laughs> Luca's nice. Yeah. But what's his upside though? Um, how much better can he really get? I mean, he's not athletic. Yeah, he's not athletic. That's the only thing. So, I guess, and a lot of his buckets are you know tough, tough ones anyway. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. Can he can he mm. start to get easier looks? But that's the thing. I mean, they had Dirk for how many years, and Dirk wasn't really athletic. So, but obviously, got, I guess what made it easy for Dirk was obviously because he was a big man. That's why. But yeah, like I mean, for that team as well, for how the yeah for how the man was coached and trained or whatever. Yeah, I guess for that team, does he really need to be that athletic? Yeah, I feel like Luca number six. Are an okay duo, but um, I think they're gonna be the team that goes out and gets a third guy. Yeah, they're gonna get a third guy mm. so, at some point. Um, and Mark Cuban's a good owner; he's he's gonna spend the money. So yeah, I'll just say wait and see on those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, what other teams? I think I was looking. I don't know if any other teams could get better. Like, obviously, the box they've had their season. I don't know how they could improve sort of thing. I think it's just... I call them a scrimmage team. Why? Because they're that team where five guys walk in really late. Yeah. And they're just longer and athletic, more athletic than the rest. Yeah. And then you just have to grind it out and beat them. Hmm. And after you beat them, you're bloody tired. Mm. So I just feel like they might make it to the NBA finals or whatever purely mm. because they're better than everyone else in the East. Yeah. But if another team beats them, I just feel like all they would have achieved is made the other team more tired before they go play somebody else. Yeah. Um, so whoever's out West, they can thank the Bucks for making... Um, Philadelphia, Boston, or whoever else tired for yeah. making the job easier. But True. even, like I said earlier, I can't see any team in the East going through to the finals and winning. Mm. Can't see it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a tough one still. I mean, it's weird, man, because the East is just like, because despite everything that's happened over in the East anyway, yeah, they've got a little bit stronger, but they haven't, a, they haven't been able to... Yeah, there's not going to be that... Mm, yeah, Raptors again this year. I don't see them. I don't see them. I don't. I, I, I see them dropping to at least like fourth or fifth at least. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Because that you know, after losing Kawhi, because I think that's the reason why they were better, is because of Kawhi. I mean, to be fair, they did have a couple of role players who stepped up. Not not normally, but normally they yeah they stepped up. They did their thing, but. After losing Kawhi, that main guy, they're not really gonna have. Yeah, they're not gonna have really anything special. It's probably just that one season, and then the rest of it's just gonna be mediocre, mediocre. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, um, obviously, I've seen a few like, but even like, um, even obviously, everyone else is getting prepared for like what the FIBA World Cup. Um, I think a few players have dropped out actually, quite a few stars. But yeah, but the thing is, I feel Everybody. like I, I feel like the the FIBA's coming like the World Cup's becoming like how um, what's the one where it's just America? Um, uh, what's the one? It's just America or South, uh, South America? I should say really that that America that America's Cup really basically like that. It's becoming kind of like that. It's not. Like when it's the obviously if you hear like yeah it's the um, it's the Olympics everyone's there, but if it, well, the World Cup is just becoming one of those things. It's just like well, the World Cup's always been like that. Yeah. Um. But I think in recent years it's become more for the second tier stars. Yeah. To go out there, show out, and whatever. I yeah. think this off season was so crazy. Mm. Everybody's decided to stay at home you know, reevaluate what's going on. And in the last th few years, um, the Drew League's become popular, you know, yeah, people, Drew just, yeah. people just going out and scrimmaging scrimmage for their out. own brand's sake. Yeah. Um, all of those things come into play and you know what? It's, it's crazy. You go out and play for USA, but it's not the Olympics. Yeah. Like it's the World Cup. Yeah. It's not. It's not. For whatever reason, it just doesn't hold the same, same weight. Same as the Olympics. Yeah. Um. So I think it's a good opportunity for the younger guys to go out. And yeah, play. to go out and do. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, maybe if you're in your first year or second year of yeah. the league, 
you know, maybe I think, use yeah. it as an audition for the Olympics. I think, yeah, basically, I think it's like if you're like a mid, if you're like a uh, like a one of those mid tier vets, then you'll just be one of those. You'll be going out for the World Cup and just doing whatever. Because before you could have like stars, Anthony Davis. Like a couple of years, but you had Derek Rose on the team. You had like all these other players that were like top tier guys, but then now young stars. Oh yeah, true at the time. Yeah, young true, stars true at the time. Yeah, go give it that. Go give it that. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Most of the ground's been covered. Um, as usual, guys, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Hopefully, we'll have Sam's back on podcast again. Yep, my Instagram is Wasami Life. Um, Chris will probably put that yeah. in the description sometime. I'll put that all down below as well and if you haven't uh, listened to part one I'll put part one in the link for that as well down below in the description of course yeah again guys we'll see you for the next one peace